In this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to set up this, the Skyport Tool Wi-Fi module to work with your Celestron telescope so you can control things wirelessly with Skyport Lab. Okay, so if you've seen some of my older videos, I have a Celestron Nexstar 6SE telescope and it must be nearly a year and a half ago, I think, maybe a little bit more, I picked up one of these the Celestron Sky Portal Wi-Fi modules. I got it um, secondhand in the um, Amazon warehouse. It's a second generation one. Uh, you can tell which generation um, you have by when you plug this into the telescope and it broadcasts its wireless network. You'll have Celestron uh, dash and then some numbers. If you have one number, it's a first generation. If you have two numbers, it's a second generation. And if you have the latest one, which is third generation, there are three numbers. Now, the advantage of having this wireless dongle is just it gives you the ability to much easier control uh, your telescope via an app, as opposed to having to put all the information into the handheld and use the go-to uh, elements there. You can also do alignments and things through the app as well. So these things aren't essential just makes things a little bit easier, especially when it's cold, uh, you can be sat inside and control the telescope uh, as opposed to being you know, sat out in the freezing cold, kind of manually doing everything. The other options are, you can also use some different software in addition to Sky Portal. I think it's, um, I can't remember the name of the software, I'll put it down below. Um, you can use some other software as well that will give you more flexibility. So one of the, restraints of the go-to element of the telescope is it only knows of a certain amount of things that, that the database on the handheld can hold. So you might read something in a magazine about a certain cluster or something, you wanna go and look to it, uh, and that reference isn't known in the module, whereas the applications on the computer obviously have much more memory and have kind of a better uh, database of the stars, and you can obviously just program that into the app and it will enable you to go there a bit easier. So these are the real advantages. Um, one thing to note, when you do plug this into the auxiliary ports of your telescope, if it's especially like um, mine on my Nexstar 6SE, it protrudes quite a lot. Uh, and depending on what eyepieces you have attached, you may end up kind of getting it caught, um, you know, when you're slewing the telescope. So one thing you can do, it's not a requirement, uh, but a nice to have is you can buy an aux splitter. So it's an additional cable that you plug in, um, has less uh, surface area sticking out of the auxiliary port and also if you want to have uh, additional um, you know modules to plug into your telescope you'll need an aux splitter anyway to better have more than one aux port so that's kind of uh, why you might want one so in this video I'm just going to very quickly show you um, the two methods to connect uh, I'm not going to cover how to do star alignment with it because it's pretty much straightforward and if you've been doing um, you know star alignments with a go-to handheld you, you know what you're doing uh, if it's of interest, I will do a separate video on kind of the um, star alignment stuff. Uh, this is just about getting this working with Sky Portal. So, a couple of things to note um, about the device itself. Um, RJ11 connector, which plugs into the auxiliary port. When you look at it, there are a couple of things to notice. When you uh, look on the one side, there's this little kind of switch it's quite difficult to get out you need to get your nail in there when that switch is pointing up it's in direct access mode when that switch is pointing down it's in access point mode now this is important when you first do the configuration you're going to want it in direct access mode this is really helpful obviously one for the first connection it gives you direct connection to the telescope and the app but obviously you lose any internet access that you might have um but enables you to connect and especially if you're going up a field or in up a field, up a hill or in a field, um, you'll want to have that direct access. However, if you're at home, you might want to con configure it to be in access point mode where it connects to your wireless network at home. Um, and so you configure that and we'll show you how to do that. You'll then switch it to access point mode. It will connect to your, connect to your local wireless network and then you can control your telescope through there. There is a slight bit of latency because it's going through the network as opposed to a direct connection, but um, not, not a big issue. Uh, and on the top side here, there are three red LEDs. The one red LED signifies that 
um, there's power. The second LED signifies um, about connection. So you'll notice when you first plug this in, it, it um, flashes very quickly. If there's no uh, connection, then it's like a gentle um, pulsing when there is a connection that's configured. And then lastly is like a communication light. So when data is transferring, that light will flash a lot quicker. And then finally, on the other side, the opposite side of the switch is, is a very small pinhole. And that's where you press and hold to reset the configuration of this device if you need to. So start off by plugging this into your Celestron telescope. Make sure everything's powered up. You should see that um, top and middle lights come on. Make sure it's in the up direct access mode. From there on your device, I'm gonna use an iPad uh, for this demonstration. Open up the settings on your iPad and look for that um, Celestron network. Again, mine is Celestron dash and then the two numbers. Connect to that so that the, the iPad is now communicating to the wireless uh, module on the uh, Wi-Fi module for Celestron. Open up the Sky Portal app. Once that's open, click on the little telescope and click connect. Shouldn't take uh, very long, about 30 seconds or so, and you'll see you have connection. Now you have the ability to slew and align and configure um, the Sky Portal app to work with your telescope. So super straightforward. In seconds, you can be up and running. Um, it works uh, really well. Obviously, you don't have any internet connection if you try to use other apps at the same time. So the next thing you want to do is to configure access point mode. So with things still connected in direct connect mode, you need to go into the settings, select configure access point. In here, um, you'll either have an open network, a web enabled network, or most likely a WPA secured network. Um, so in my case, I'm using WPA, so click WPA. It's gonna ask you to put in the SSID, so that's the name of your wireless network at the top. And then secondly, the password for your wireless network. So these are things that you already should know for your wireless network at home. If you're not familiar uh, and you're using a commercial access point, they're probably a little um, sticker or something on the back of your access point that have this information on. So you put that in here, and then very much likely you're using DHCP. So click that little toggle to enable DHCP, and then click Done. As you do that, basically what that's doing is that's transferring that settings um, from the Sky Portal app to this um, Sky Portal Wi-Fi dongle. And once those things um, are saved, obviously you've clicked done, then go to settings again in the Sky Portal app, change from direct access mode to connect via the access um, point. It will then prompt you to switch to the little toggle switch on the Wi-Fi module. You'll do that. You can still leave everything powered on and plugged in. Wait a few seconds for it just to make sure that settings are connected. It will try and connect to your wireless network. Now click connect again on the telescope. Again, it takes a little bit longer. Uh, but once that's connected again, you'll get that chime and then you are connected and you have the ability to control, align and slew um, your telescope via the app, via your wireless network. And so this again will give other opportunities for other apps in the future. So that's it, I hope this helps. Again, I haven't used this uh, a ton, uh, but I wanna start using it more, which is why it prompted me to do this video, which I started um, nearly two years ago when I took the screenshot, uh, but it does work well. And in theory, I haven't tried it yet, but you may have the ability to update uh, your telescope and stuff via the Wi-Fi module again. I haven't tried that out yet. You may actually need a Gen 3 for that, I don't know, um, but I'll look at that in other videos in the future if it's possible. Um, but yeah, this opens up you know, a little bit of ease of use and comfort for your astronomy viewing with your Celestron telescope. Leave a comment below if this video was helpful. Also, if you've got one of these modules uh, and you've found it worked well or it didn't work well, what your issues have been, and also what other apps you've been able to use with your Celestron telescope and Sky Portal Wi-Fi module. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.